see if you can stop the tune. <laughs> too late. Too late. <sighs> yeah. Welcome back to another episode of Fix My Game. We're here in London at the Roger Gracie Academy with the greatest of all time, Roger Gracie. Uh, multiple time ADCC World Champion, multiple time IBJJF World Champion. Uh, Roger, we just saw you go through a couple of rounds here at class, so hopefully you're a little tired for me. Hopefully for you. <laughs> it's coming. It's coming. Yeah. Yeah. The hand is coming. Oh, my God. 
<laughs> moving like a lightweight. Yeah. There were moments like in that backside half guard where I was starting to lift a leg where you made me feel like I was able to do it and then the last moment you took it away from me and you went the other way. Yeah, that was, I had your arm tight so it's pretty confident even if you lift me up because you were trapped. Like it's, you know, I was, right. like for you to, to, to get my back, the, right. you know, your shoulder sure, sure, was pinned on the floor. And then the, so I feel pretty safe. the elevating made me feel like I was doing something good. So I kept doing it, but I was just wasting energy. Yeah. And then when you switch, I'm in a lot more danger because of it. I think you tried to lift me up while it was too tight mm -hmm. on your shoulder and your back on the floor. So right. you kind of, it wow. seems that like you're going to go somewhere, but then you open up because you can only go halfway. Right. Like the other part of your body is, is locked, is trapped. I have a, a ton of questions that I could ask you about your techniques and the things that you did in that round and the things that we all know you're very famous for. Um, but I think to start, is there anything that maybe you noticed in, in my technique and maybe my approach? One of the main things is a, is a pretty strong principle. Like when you're doing guard, you have to worry more about my arms. Like my arms are pretty free mm -hmm. a lot of the times. So that means they're free to engage against your legs. I, I had a lot of control over your legs. Mm -hmm. Like if you're doing guard, at least that's for me is a very strong principle. The first thing I go for is person's arm. Not, not both, but then sort of like spider guard, you see it's harder. But one of your arms, I have to be in control. So that means their arm, if you try to, you know, to pin my leg or two against my leg to get it out of the way, I can fight off. But if you're going this way, my main concern is always this arm. If I'm doing guard this way, then it's that one. Because for you to pass my guard, I mean mainly this leg is more on your way. Right. This is the, I mean this is, it's, it's a shield, but you know, that leg is, you know, for you to pass that way, their arm will always fight against this leg, never across. Because if you cross, you, know, you open up, arm drag, back take. Mm -hmm. So it, it, there's some situation that you know you would use this, but then this you have to grab my upper body. But mainly, I mean, if you think their arm yeah. fight against that leg, so so as long as I control their arm, you can't you can't get the leg out of the way. So in any situation, so see, I'm always controlling your arm, not much here, because now. You know, your arms are free. I, I find much harder to defend guard without controlling one arm. So if I'm doing guard this way, you know, so we can be same side or cross, sometimes I go both. But that way, it's very hard for you to get past this side. That's a principle I use, which is extremely important. Arm control. Arm control. That's Sometimes it's always better to go two in one, so there's two of my arms. Then I can con control, manipulate your arm better. Sometimes I can go on the collar, you know, I can use one hand to for, for other things. And I can always go back two and one. But to one I'm always holding, it can be across or the same. Mm -hmm. And I can, you know, I can constantly keep coming back for two and one. I think I want to ask you, kind of speaking of that from the other side, the way you uh, were working to pass my butterfly guard, um, we talked a little bit about you came over the top and flattened me out. But then it felt like there was a very systematic way of pinning my legs so that you can get around and I felt like anytime you like you set a pin and then you replaced it before you moved your arm like with your leg Do you know what I'm talking about yeah. I think especially from the butterfly guard most of your attacks come when your body is in an angle mm -hmm. you know if you're flat on your back because butterfly guys the hooks right so you, you know you want to use your legs to lift the person's body to throw to and uh, you know to switch your attacks if your back is flat on the floor your your force is only up you know, for you to sweep, you gotta be in an angle when you're gonna throw the guy to the side. You know, so butterfly guard, the person's always kind of side is to, you know, to, to sweep the other person. So when I, when I grab your back, that way I can flat your, 
I can put your back flat on the floor. So all the angles for you to sweep me, you're off now. It's much harder. Like you have to readjust your body before you try to sweep me. So that makes like, you know, you won't step behind. You're not prepared. There's a lot of preparation until you can actually sweep me. So, you know, I take your, your, I take your body out of line. And then, the, you know, it's just a matter of getting over, trying to get over one of your knees, you know, which, whichever side I choose to pass. And then, because you're flat, you know, it's, they're not, they're not, one hand will go on the body, the other one on the legs will start going over. It's harder for you to defend and when your back is flat on the floor. Yeah, I put, you know, the, the first one I grab very low and then I, I lean over and bring my knees to trap your legs. So if, but if I keep my legs apart, you can close guard. So, I, you know, I bring, so that way, you know, and I go very low. Because now, I mean, you, you, you're almost like trapped, you know, your, your arm inside. Is almost like a dead arm mm -hmm. so you know the, because I have with the underhook I will start fighting to go over that leg and that way the, you know my body stays very tight to yours mm -hmm. and then the next step will be to you know grab over the head and run over because now you know people has the not, not, not the impression but the, you know they, they, they're gonna most of the time they'll try to use that hook and not on, when I grab that's when I'm gonna no, all the times from here, I mount. Yeah, the moment that I grab your head, now you cannot push me away. Mm -hmm. And it's, the, the, it, that, that's like priority when you get chest to chest. Because if I don't grab your head, if I just keep my arms around you, especially against a strong person, you know, sometimes they put their hand on the chest and they go, oh. you know, they're able to gain, regain space quite easily. With my grip behind your head, they have no chance. I mean, it's like the arm locks me into you. So. You know, usually, you know, butterfly, the person wants to be like sideways, you know. Mm -hmm. So here, you want to lock, lock your you lock your hands. And are you going down yeah. on the elbow? Yeah, as, as low on my lower back as you can. So now you, you, you drive him, push with your legs. Yes, but put my back on the floor, like pin. Yes, like lean your weight. Because if I'm sitting, mm -hmm. you know, it's still dangerous for you. Sorry. Yes. yes. Like lean, but all, all the, yes. No, no, because now... I'm talking, it's very uncomfortable for the back. So it feels here like I'm even driving weight maybe off of my legs. Yeah, like no. I don't want my legs too heavy here to get no. my... No, you want to be heavy mm. yeah, on, your, on your upper body. You just want your knees close so my legs are trapped. I, see. I can't close the guard. Yes. So on this side, I have a free arm. Uh -huh. So if you try to go over that leg, yeah, I can... Okay. Yeah, no, I, I, my arm can mm. get in your way. So here you keep this arm tight, mm -hmm. put, put your elbow on top of my, my leg. Yeah, exactly, and go over. Yes. And now, stay very tight, because I want to start the, you know, pushing your waist, so climb up and grab my head. Yes. Now I can't push you with the arm. It's still on your knees. Yes, what, what, why your knees? Your knees are based, yes. Nice. Because if I start pushing here, yeah, put your hand on my knee. And you're right, like, you feel in the bottom position like you want to extend that, and I'm, yeah. I'm waiting for that moment. The moment that I start pushing to try to lift you up, you push the knee amount. So your goal is to hug my back, you know, lock, lock your arms and put me up my back flat on the floor. Yes. Because the arm, yeah. Exactly. Now I'm trapped. Now that you're trapped. Yeah. Yes, here. Yeah. Why yeah. yeah. yeah, don't you? You need to grab my head because I want to push you exactly. Because now I can't. Doesn't matter how strong I am. Now wait, deep. Yes, because you can use that shoulder. Mm. Wide your knees. Yes. The more that I start pushing. Oh. Now when you say wider my knees, I feel like my base is not compromised. My base is wider, but I feel like my legs are lighter when my knees are wide. Is that? No, it doesn't matter because the the moment that I start, that I try to lift you up, then you mount. Okay. Because if you keep your knees together, no. Yeah. You have the, it's yeah. very dangerous for me to, to bridge. Okay. Like I think a lot of times, maybe because I'm, I'm smaller, I'm kind of bunched up here. Whereas it felt like when you were walking me through that position, I was projecting yeah. forward in a way that made me heavier. You, you use your body against mine to keep my back on the floor. Mm -hmm. But if you don't pr project your body forward, I, you know, I can sit. So it's your body against mine, keeping me on the floor. Because you don't, you don't need a lot of weight to have my back on the floor. You just need to, to push from your legs. You know, so your legs are driving your body forward. You, you, you don't want to uh, 
put too much because then your hips get too light, but enough that my back has to be on the floor. You're obviously famous for your ability not to just achieve a cross choke, but do it in the same position, in the same method against an opponent who's been expecting it, who knows it's coming. Um, and you have to have some kind of secret there to, to what makes it so effective, what makes you so, so good at it. I'm hoping you can maybe share some of that. In terms of securing the mount, there's two places that, uh, you know, when you bridge, I'm, I, I can be very safe in, in, in the mount. So first, it's, you know, you, I have to stay high enough so your, your elbows cannot feel inside. Mm -hmm. that, you know, that way you can start pushing. So, same, in, you know, high enough so there's no space for your arms. When you, when you bridge, if I stay very tall, it's, it's hard for you to bridge because, you know, as long as my head doesn't pass my hips, you, you cannot project me forward. Like, with, with bridge, usually this all happens. On top of a horse, you know, a bull, you know, they say very soft and the hips always go forward, not, not the head. Oh, and I, and then when I'm starting to attack the neck, it's, and then I go very low. Like, if, you know, if you bridge, my, my, it's, my head will, will work as a hand. So that way my hand can stay free to attack. So, you know, I, I keep myself very really low as I attack with your neck. And once I have the, the hand in, you know, the first, the, the first hand has to stay very deep, as, you know, as deep as I can. You know, if, if, if it's not deep enough, you shouldn't go for the second hand. And then attacking the second one, you know, I really wide myself and drop all my way down to this side. Because there's no way you're going to bridge to my left, you know, to your right. And if you try to bridge this way, I'm already blocking even before you bridge. Mm -hmm. you know, it's to, to go four fingers in on this angle, you know, usually the person will have two hands inside. So I find much easier to go with the thumb behind mm -hmm. your ear. Because for you to defend that, you need to bring your, your arm all the way to the back of your neck, but now you expose your arm. You know, you, you open up your arm. So usually, you know, you still keep your elbow down, but then the, the ear is as far as you go. So then we get the, the grip behind, and then boom. So that thumb inside, behind the ear, getting the grip. Because for you to defend, you, know, you, you shouldn't lift your elbow up. So for the hand to reach for the back of her neck, the elbow goes right up. Now, you expose your arm. When you go thumb in, naturally your forearm frames against my head. Do you use that to open space? Do you know what I mean? Like, <coughs> it's, it's more to, to keep me base. I keep my elbow on the floor, okay. almost like, you know, hand in case you bridge. So I use the elbow on my forehead. Then that, that, that I feel very secure. Keep yeah. Solid there. So I don't need. To, I, I can keep my hands free yeah. to, to attack, and then yeah. and when I rotate, you know, it's stay very low. Hi, man. Yeah. And I notice you're very heavy when you're sitting straight yeah. up. And then as you put the first hand, mm -hmm. your weight transfer a little that way, because that sure. you know you you can still use your left arm to block if I try to bridge, and you you stay on that side. There's no chance. Right. I can bridge you off the other. So I'm grabbing here? No, you don't, not, not yet, because now you have that hand. So right. this you can allow yourself to stay slightly high. Mm -hmm. So you use that hand to, to adjust the collar. Use both hands so until we go. Now wait. Mm -hmm. See that? No, hold, hold. Mm -hmm. This should be all tight already. Mm -hmm. Like I should be, you know, being half stronger with the hand. Yeah, now I'm getting, I'm turning red, exactly. Because now, Put your elbow on, on top of my head, on the floor. This arm? Yeah, on the floor, yes. Because now, I drive the bridge. And then when I start defending, you go thumb in right behind the ear. Yeah. Now, you know, you put your wrist, in every, when you see the end of my fingers, to, you squeeze against my head, your wrist. And now, yes, exactly. You find whatever the end of my fingers are, then you press your, your wrist because this. Okay. The motion is kind of just like peeling yeah, on your wrist. Exactly. Right? Like giving the person a shave. <laughs> now get your elbow tight. Yes. Exactly. And then straight away, the hand will go up to the hand behind the ear. Like those, those little details. It, it seems like you pointed out openings that I've never seen in that yeah. in that technique, um, and yeah, including just being in a good base. Yeah. 
I mean, it, it, it is simple, but it's just very hard to maintain some positions. Mm -hmm. It's like, you know, just maintaining the high mark is hard, <laughs> but the person constantly trying to push you down. Mm -hmm. You know, it's dealing with, you know, as you're trying to get the hand in, sometimes, you know, you open space for the elbow, then you got to deal with the elbow. When do you choose to attack? It, it's, you know, if you feel, you know, that the mount is not secure, you shouldn't attack. You should reestablish your control, you know, and, and then go for the submission. I think that's why probably people lose the, the attack or the mount the most. Because, you know, they, 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 they try to submit not in a very strong position in the mount. It's not just because you're in the mount that you're ready to submit. You know, if you're in a low mount, you're not ready at all. Because for me to, to escape, most of my escapes, I need to keep you in a lower mount and then I bridge, and then you know, I can push your elbow. I cannot stop applying my escapes. Rod, some really incredible details. Um, the, the cross collar choke, obviously, the, the guard passing, and just all of the concepts. Um, it's been an absolute pleasure to, to do this with you. Thank you so much for sharing. Um, I like it, Yeah, it's been, been, been fabulous.